Thank the Lord for the beautiful sunshine. Thank you, man, that you uh, uh, desire to come here today than going to Bristol. Yep. And let me tell you something, every one of you are a winner today. You're in, you're going, you're in the winner circle, okay? Amen. You don't have to go up there and listen to all that junk today. And I appreciate the Lord for allowing us to come in this house. Amen. And a lot of folk has traveled 100,000 miles just to come uh, to the racetrack to watch them go around and around. Well, I can go right down here and I can watch them go around and around about all day long. But I appreciate the Lord today and I appreciate all that the Lord's done. If you would turn your Bible with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I think we've got a young man here who's had a birthday today. I found out a while ago. Amen. And he's a. Amen. Stand up, our son. Amen. He knows who he was. How, how young are you? 17. Let's sing a verse of happy birthday to him. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. You'll never be 17 again. Amen. Hope you have many, many more. Amen. And if you've had a birthday, well, somebody let us know. We'll sing happy birthday to you. I got one little lady here. She came in here and I had it on my mind to sing her happy birthday. And then I forgot all about it. And I had to hunt their phone number up and I called them two or three times that way. Just so I sang happy birthday to her. Amen. And she I never could catch her. Had to wait till the next Sunday. Amen. She'd come back and we sang it to her. Amen. I appreciate every one of you. Love you deep her heart. The Lord blessed us these good many years. Amen. To do a work for Him. I feel like I've been a failure in a lot of ways. Uh, and especially in the last uh, a year or so. It seemed like I, my mind and my body is just... Uh, separated sometimes i got to reading on my medication the other day and i found out some of the problems it's that cotton pick i tell you you keep go to the doctor they'll kill you yeah. amen <laughs> amen i found out one of the pills they gave me and, and it's a heavy dose of it for my sugar and uh it's uh, really taking a toll on me so uh, i want you to pray i, I stayed off there for about three years I want to get back to the place that I can get back off of it. The last time I went off of it, the doctor said, who told you to quit? I said, I did. <laughs> Amen. And uh, he didn't like it too good. And I went to him for about two years, and finally he, he understood where I was coming from. But uh, this past winter, I let things get away from him. And, and uh, you know how it is. Your body will just fall apart. Well, if, if you ain't got there yet, it, don't worry. He'll come. He'll come to you. Amen. Amen. I appreciate the Lord. Chapter 6. How many got your Bibles this morning? Amen. Hold them up high. Shaking the face of the devil. Amen. Now y'all shaking them at me, so I must be the devil. <laughs> no, I take that back. Take that back. Amen. Chapter 6 of the book of Ephesians, verse, uh, verse number 10. We're going to read here. A uh, ways down through the words here. Talking about warfare. Talking about uh, every one of us. And, uh, you know, folk, we are in warfare whether you realize or not. Uh, you see, when you think of warfare, you think about uh, uh, guns going off and missiles and, and, and all kinds of things happening. Amen. People's uh, lives are being lost every day uh, because of warfare and whatnot. And certainly there is war going on. Amen. With uh, these people that uh, call themselves ISIS and, and uh, the Muslim faith. And, and I was listening to a, 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 a radio commentator the other day and, and he, was talking about, uh, he was talking about Muslims and talking about Christians. Nancy and the reason they call us uh, these uh, call us atheists or call us uh, uh, what do you call them? infidels is because we believe in the Trinity of the Godhead. They only believe in one God, but they do reckon Christ, recognize Christ from one place in the Quran. Amen. As being a prophet. Well, I'm going to tell you something. He's more than a prophet. He was the Son of God. Amen. If anybody's confused on, on the uh, doctrine, amen, uh, it's the world. The Bible says the scripture's hid, it's hid to them that are lost. I'm glad, praise God, and I find that God will reveal his word to you, and he'll let you know what the truth is. The truth will set you free. Amen. A lie will get you in trouble. Amen. That's the reason a lot of people's in trouble today, because of a lie, amen, a cover-up. But listen here real close. I don't want you to read along with me this morning. Amen. This is for every one of us this morning. Amen. Somebody has People said, well, said the preacher must have been preaching to somebody else. Well, today it's to everybody. 
So you're not excluded. Amen. I don't care how righteous. I don't care how good you think you are. You're the same boat here this morning. All right. In chapter 6, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rules of darkness uh, of this world, against the uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, I have taken to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. Heavy would say the evil days upon us. Amen? Certainly so. You can't turn to the right or left without seeing evil and ungodliness. Amen. Uh, so listen to what it says, amen, here in verse 14. It stand, uh, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, here's where my, verse, uh, where my text is going to come from today in verse 15. He says, and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Let me read that verse again. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Above all, taking the shield of faith for uh, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fire darts of the wicked and take the helm of the salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Uh, praying always and with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching uh, thereunto uh, with all preservance and supplication for the same. For, uh, and for me, uh, th that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly uh, to make known the mystery of the gospel. Let us pray. Father, again, we thank you, Lord, and other proofs we have together in your house. Thank you, Father, for every home that's represented here today. I found the eldest down to the least. Oh God, I praise you and thank you, Father, for filling your house. And Lord, we know God, it's all impossible uh, through your Son Jesus, the day that we live and have our being. Lord, we have to recognize this morning this is the filling station, dear God, that you've given us, that we could come in and hear good things from you. We thank you, Lord, that your word is true. Lord, that you, our Father, will not leave us forsaken, that you'll go with us all the way to the end of the world. We know, Lord, many of the afflictions are righteous, but we know that today, dear God, that you are a reward for them that do only seek you. I praise you this morning, and thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us down through the years. And Lord, we proclaim, dear God, your word here today. And Lord, in the hearing of these folks today, dear God, we just pray, God, that you'd help us, Lord, to mind the things of God. And Lord, that we might look to you for our strength and help, and not lean to our own understanding. We praise you, and thank you, Father, for our happiness, Lord, for deliverance, for God, for our death is applying all of our needs, Lord, reaching down, dear God, and touching, Lord, where we can't touch. I thank you, Lord, that you're merciful and long-suffering toward us, and I ask you here this morning, dear God, that you just give the nunchkin, O oh God, of thy Holy Spirit, and help us, Lord, here this morning, that we may, Lord, Father, seek after you and give you praise and see souls saved, Father, before it's too late. Send revival, dear God, in your land, and touch, we pray, Lord, upon the many meetings, dear God, that's going on. I, Father, at this present time, I pray, God, that you would touch Thank you for the good uh, uh, number of souls that we've been here and being saved, dear God. And we ask your Lord that you continue to reach down. Send Holy Ghost revival to Freedom Baptist Church into our hearts, into our lives, oh God, and help us, Lord, to see a movement, dear God, in this community, in our homes and families, that we might, oh God, see others turn, turn to you for it's too late. I pray now, God, that you'll send Holy Ghost conviction upon this message, and Lord, that you'll touch it, oh God, that we'll might ever, Lord, so I'll give you the praise and honor for everything, because we ask it in Jesus Christ and holy name. Amen. If you look back this morning here in chapter uh, 6 here in verse 15 it says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Amen. Folks, we're living in a day and time, amen, that I might find the newspaper gets more audience or the funny books or the TV or uh, the media today gets more attention than the word of God does. Amen. I want you to know that you are a living epistle, amen. You are the word of God. I'm glad that Amen, that he's making up uh, his jewels, and I'm thankful, praise God, that uh, my friend, we get our strength. I heard on the uh, the, the, the the news the other day, amen, that uh, they're able to make uh, diamonds, amen, uh, my friend, uh, without having to dig for them. Well, let me tell you something to me. A diamond, amen, is something, praise
great God that's very precious, yeah. amen, and it's very valuable, and we all I have a desire for it. But let me say to you, more than the greatest pearl, more than the greatest diamond or ruby or whatever it may be, I hope and pray today that you'll find that Christ be the most important thing in your life, amen. He be the diadem in your life. He be the one, my friend, that uh, my friend would shine out in your life more than any other, amen. We look through the scriptures, and I've got several places I, I marked, amen, and, and I, I, don't, I don't do a, 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 what do you call them things? I don't do an outline. I just go through the scripture and start jotting the scriptures down. Amen. And, and whatever God wants me to use, that's what I'll use. Amen. I, I believe, folks, amen, my friend, we, uh, we're living in a day and time. We need something that's real. Yeah. Don't you? Well, amen. amen. How many of you got salvation? You know you're saved. Born again. Yeah. Say amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. You know what you got. If you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you've come to the right place. You can know him as your personal Savior here this morning. He said, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Amen. I may believe, my friend, that uh, my friend, that we ought to have our feet shod uh, with the preparation of the gospel. Amen. And let me take you back here just a few minutes in, in, in Psalm chapter 40 and verse 1. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord and I and, and inclined my, I'm, I'm inclined unto, he inclined unto me and heard my cry. I want to ask you a question today. Amen. Have you cried upon, unto the Lord lately and talked to him about the urgent need, amen, in your life? The Bible says we have not because we ask not when we ask, we ask to me. I made a belief, okay, man, that we need to search the scripture and know that God is a reward to them that deals with seeking, amen. He says he brought me up. I don't know where he found you, but this is what he says in verse 2. He said he brought me up also out of a horrible pit and out of the mire clay and set my feet upon the rock. Amen. Let me tell you something. I'm thankful, praise God, what we're working today is solid. Amen. It don't change as the weather change. It don't change, my friend, as the season change. It don't change when you and I change. Amen. But I'm going to say to you, he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall abide forever. I'm glad that we're established upon the rock. And you know who that rock is? It's Christ. Amen. It's Christ. He said, in verse 3, he said, and he has put a new song in my, in my mouth, uh, even praise unto, uh, unto our God. God, many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh his Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor, nor such as turn aside to light. Let me say to you, amen, as Brother Tom was teaching a while ago, amen, about uh, things, my friend, that we need not hide. I'm going to tell you something. Well, a lot of times we hide things from ourselves. Yeah. Amen. The Bible said a man believe a lie and be damned. Amen. We, we say, well, I ain't done nothing wrong. I had a man up a plank one time. He come in. He started a cursing going on. I said, hey, buddy, hold your, hold your tongue there a minute. He said, well, I ain't said nothing bad. I said, you didn't hear yourself. Yeah. Amen. Most of the time, this thing's running. This up here is out of gear. Amen. Amen. And I made a belief, folks, that we're living in a time, my friend, that my friend, that we don't want to uh, hear a rebuke, amen. But my friend, my friend, the, the Bible teaches us open rebuke is better than secret love. Hello, amen. I'm thankful, amen, my friend, that, that my friend, as we study the Word of God, amen, we, uh, we, uh, we, we do something for these things. Let me tell you something. If you're still going to the place that you once went, my friend, before you say, uh, my friend, there's something wrong with your religion. Amen. My friend, salvation will bring you out of the world and cause you to be separated, uh, my friend, uh, uh, from the world and be drawn out of God. He goes on here, let me say this. He said, Blessed the man that maketh his and maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn uh, aside the light. Many, O Lord, my God, are the wonderful works which thou hast done. And listen, and thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. Listen, he said, if I would declare and speak them, they are more than be, be numbered. Folks, listen, for him to know to do good and do it not is what? Sin. Sin. It's plain and simple. Amen. I thank God, amen, my friend, that we can take the Word of God, we can study the Word of God, and we can look, my friend, to what God has helped us with. Let me look down here just a minute. Amen, my friend. In verse, go back to verse 2. He said, uh, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, and, my, and uh, out of the mire clay, and set my feet upon a rock. 
I'm afraid there's a lot of people today, they're on the rock all right, but they're always slipping off. They're always going back. If you have a desire to do the things, amen, of this world more than the things of God, there's something wrong. We ought not let anything separate us from the Lord. Amen. In Psalms, amen, uh, my friend 56, amen, it tells us here in verse, in verse uh, 13, and I'm going to back up here. He said, uh, uh, in verse 4, he said, uh, in God will I praise his word. Uh, in God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. When you put your trust in the Lord, you don't have to worry. Remember, my friend, when David, my friend Saul, was after David to kill him. Amen. God made it possible that David was uh, uh, go right into his cave while Saul was asleep and still in uh, uh, my friend his armor, his sword. I mean, my friend, listen, uh, he took a fear of, uh, of death out. I don't know about you, friend, but I'm glad that I've got peace today yeah. in the Lord Jesus Christ. If I leave here today, my friend, I want you to know I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. I don't want you to weep over me. I want you to rejoice. Amen. A lot of people, my friend, are there are weeping. Amen. Uh, I heard Brother Tom the other day uh, talking about death and the, and the family or, and the, uh, some of his friends and loved ones. And he said it was a shock. It is a shock. It is a shock when death comes and, uh, and reaches the rim of our life. But I want you to know, it's reality. Yeah. I've told people for years, amen, death is part of living. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. We look out here and winter got past us by now, friend. And my friend, everything that you see out there was dead and brown. But friend, things are becoming alive tonight or today. And it's all because, my friend, what God is doing. Have you noticed there's not been much rain? Yeah, the grass is green. How can that be? I can remember my friend in the late summers, amen, that the ground would be parched so much, amen, there'd be great cracks in the ground, my friend, that, uh, my friend, that uh, you, you, you know and realize what was taking place. But here, we ain't seen no ranch on out there anything, and yet God's made everything green. I'm glad today that I've got God in my, head, in my heart. He says in verse 13, he says, For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Have you saved man? Praise the Lord. He said, Wilt thou, uh, not, uh, not, uh, uh, will not thou deliver my feet from falling? Let me tell you something. As the brothers told us, I spoke this morning, my friend, we all fail and come short. Yeah. Amen. The best we do. But I want to tell you something, folks. If we fail, if we come short, uh, my friend, amen, he's able to reach down where we're at. Yeah. The only thing differs, my friend, is what God can do and what we can do. My friend, listen, before God can do anything, we've got to have a repenting heart. Yeah. We've got to be sorry for what we did. And I made a belief, folks, amen, that my friend, that we need, my friend, to recognize our faults. Yeah. And when we recognize them, then, my friend, we can do something about it. I can't go to the altar for you. I, you can't go to the altar for me. But my friend, let me say, until we come, as the end of this, you want God to answer your prayer? Then get, get real with God. Yeah. Get off that slippery rock. Get out of the world and draw up close to God and let God have his way in your heart. And I'll guarantee you one thing, that God will send deliverance. Yeah. That God will reach down. The reason, my friend, we go through the valleys and troubles and heartaches, amen, is because our feet's not shod with the preparation of the God, gospel. If it was, well, we could stand up against the wiles of Satan and say, Satan, get his. Get it out of my life. I'm not serving you. You see, what happens is, my friend, we take how we feel, how what we've got, amen. I used to go around with a little jingle in my pocket, and I thought I was doing pretty good. Well... Amen. When I didn't have a little money in my pocket, I could jiggle it, amen. I felt pretty blue because I didn't have none of that. But let me say to you, I'm rich today in the Lord Jesus. Amen. I mean, he owned all the hills and all the cattle of their own and all the gold that's under it. And the diamonds, you'll have it. Amen. Listen to what he said. Praise God. He said, Thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt, thou, uh, wilt, wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Yeah. You know what our problem is today? Our problem is not, friend, uh, not saying, hey, I'm a Christian. I go to the church. But my friend, these seed ought to be carrying the gospel. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Brother Jeff's talking this morning. He, he loves turkey hunting. I, and I, I like seeing go. And I, and he's, he's done pretty good. J.C. this morning, he, uh, he, he likes to fish. And, and he told me he was going fishing the other day. The first thing he does is come in smiling like a big old uh, 
Proud dad, he said, well, I caught me some fishes. Jeff said, I got me a tur- I got me two turkeys, I think he said, all together. Hello? If we, my friend, if we were as enthusiastic, my friend, about our religion, our salvation, as we are the things of the world. I guarantee you this. Up at the racetrack this morning, they're having a humdinger of time. Hey, Amen. Yeah, in the world. Hey, listen, they're going all out. Hey, one guy, uh, he said on the news, he said, I travel all the way from Canada down here. He said, I come to spend some money. He said, this is their first race. Remember the first time you went to Pigeon Ford Gatlinburg? Didn't take long to run out of money, did it? <laughs> hey, Amen. Didn't take long. Hey, Amen. Listen, Green. Once you go to those places, it's the same old thing. Is God's house that way? You never know what God's got in plan. I don't have a little pamphlet to hand out here and tell you who's going to sing and who's, uh, what scripture's going to be re- uh, read or uh, this or that or the other. I, I believe, praise God, when we come into God's house, we ought to rely upon the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Just because you walk in the house and you smell something good in the kitchen don't mean it's always good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I may believe, they may my friend, listen, if you want, if you want something, you're going to have to have the experience. Believe that, Amen. And I do believe, amen, that the Word of God teaches us denying ungodliness, coming out of the world, and be separated. There's a reward. Little Molly ain't took her outfit. God is our help and our strength and our salvation. I praise him and I thank him. Amen. My friend, he tells us here in Psalms 115, verse 7, he says, they have hands, but they have not feet. They have not feet. They have, but they walk not. Jesus said in his word, says, here's my feet and here's my hands. We hear a lot about his hand. We don't hear much about his feet. The Bible tells us that we, and my friend, have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. I want you to know that your feet takes you everywhere that you go. Yeah. Amen. And my friend, what, what wires out on you faster than anything? It's your feet, ain't it? If you've got a pair of comfortable shoes on, amen, I guarantee you when you get home, most of you kick your shoes off. Yeah. Amen. My grandkids, they'll even kick their socks off. Amen. They want to be comfortable. Well, let me say to us, folks, the reason, my friend, that we don't have today, as far as the Lord wants us, my friend, I'm talking about, how many's got lost people? How many's walking to them? How many, my friend, today is taking the gospel? My prayer here this morning, Lord, I, I know what's coming up next week, and, and, and I, my plate's full, but I, Lord, you help me to witness every day. Lord, you help me to tell somebody about the marvelous gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, not want somebody to the Lord this week. Something wrong with it. I didn't want them one will either. I raised my hand. I just trying to get you to raise a hand. You see, our interest today is more on the world and what we have than my friend, what God wants us to do here. He said, My will is not to do my it's not to do my will, but to do the will of him that sent me. Yeah. I believe, amen, that my friend, that we need uh, to seek his faith and we need to turn to it. Amen. In Psalm 119, 105, he said, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Did anybody this week have a close call accident? Brother Joe raised his hand up. Anybody else? I had two of them yesterday. Amen. One, my friend, we were traveling down the highway, doing pretty good. Traffic on both lanes. I'll want this lady in the car and on the other lane. She wanted to come over where I was at. She didn't look. She didn't turn the signal light off. She said, I'm going to go. <laughs> well, guess what I did? I laid on the horn and laid on the brakes. And then I looked up in the mirror and I had one on top of me. The other one, my friend, I don't know what was on their mind. They couldn't decide which lane they wanted to get in. They'd ride in this a while, and then they'd ride that a while, back and forth. The second one, the, the, the last, the first one I told you about, after she did what she did, she, she slowed down real fast in that lane. I slowed down too. I wanted to look her in the eye. <laughs> I believe she read my mind. <laughs> you ever get that? You ever get that set? 
I guess one of the reasons I was upset was anything is I had my grandson in the truck with me. I wasn't so much feared about me as I was my little one. And that's the way it is with a pastor and his flock. That's the reason I go around shaking hands with everybody. And they, some of them will shake hands gladly. I, I thought about these kids this morning as they, as they was ready to take up the morning offering in the, in the bucket. I'd like to see adults get that enthused. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> didn't have to ask them twice. They just jumped right up there. Sometimes you just got to beg people to get in the choir. Sometimes you just got to beg people to come to church. I've had more people tell me, hey, I'm going to come to church. I'm going to get my life straightened out. Amen. I don't know. They think a preacher's got a magic wand. He can just wave it over it and something magical happens. It don't happen, folks. Let me tell you something. I'm a sinner just like you are. Saved by the grace of God. If I want my prayers answered, amen, if I want God to move in my life, then I'm going to have to have my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. I'm going to have to have my feet on that solid rock. I'm going to have to make up my mind who I'm going to serve. Don't get mad at the church. Don't get mad at the preacher. Don't get mad at the Sunday school teacher, amen, when they stand up and testify and sing and, and preach the gospel, amen, when you're not living your life where you ought to be and everything in the world is crumbling down at your feet. A lot of people say, well, I don't know why this has happened to me. You ever hear the saying, the blind lead the blind and they both fall in the ditch? They may have been in the ditch lately. Well, I've got a couple of being honest, three, four. Amen. Most of you seem like you're doing pretty good. Well, we'll see here in a few days. Amen. Amen. You know when I get most of my phone calls? When a problem happens, when something trouble comes. Amen. That's the reason I said about that magic wand for a girl. It don't happen, does it? The only one can deliver us is the Lord Jesus. Amen. And I praise him and thank him. He said, the law of my mouth is better and to me than a thousands of gold and silver. I'm glad today that I've got him in my heart and my life. Amen. Listen, folks. Amen. In Luke chapter 1, verse 79, it tells us over there, amen. Amen, my friend. He said, this is what he said. Amen. Chapter 1, verse 79. This is what he says here. <clears throat> amen. To give light to them, what? To them that sat in darkness into the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the ways of what? Let me ask trouble sleeping. Just tumble and toss. You ever wonder why? You ever wonder why you, you can't sleep? I, I'm one of them fellas, when I wake up, I'm awake. I don't have to have a clock to go off to me to be awake. Sometimes I'm laying there two or three hours before the clock goes off. Sometimes I get a little anxious and I reach over and pull the light switch on my lamp and see what time it is. But when it comes the time to get up, I just want to snuggle into that pillar a little bit more. Why? Because this flesh is weak. This flesh is weak. And let me tell you something. If we don't watch this flesh, it will get us into trouble. It will cause us all kinds of pain and heartaches. Amen. Amen. I praise the Lord this morning. Praise His name. Look at John chapter 13 a minute. I ain't going to be too much longer. John chapter 13 is talking about washing feet. Most people don't believe in it today just like, just like Peter did back then. You know the time when we want the Lord on us is when we're really in desperate need. Amen. It says here in, in chapter, chapter 13, it says, uh, he rises up from, verse 4, rises up from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself after he had poured water into a basin and began to wash his, the disciples, or the feet of the disciples. Wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? I guarantee you, I'll have somebody here, you ain't wash my feet. Hello? If I come right down to it right here this morning, have to be a, I just want everyone to come here and wash your feet this morning. There'll be some of you say, you ain't washed my feet. There's a lot of people today, my friend, my friend, don't, they want God in their life. They want the blessing, but they don't want God dealing with them. What I'm saying, this is what he said. Hey Amen. He says, he said, uh, Jesus, in verse 7, said, Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. When God tells you to do something, we ought not question. We ought not, uh, we ought not argue. We ought just do it. Yeah. Peter said to him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Notice this. If I wash thee not, 
That has no part with me. Where's Levi at? Come up here. Come on. I kept him yesterday and night before last, and he changed his mind about 50 times about staying all night with me. He said, Love, Papa, I just love to stay over here with you. But if I mention something about his mom or his daddy, he'd start crying and I won't go home. I get his mind off his mom and daddy and his brother, get on something else. Well, he just he just loved me to death. And I talked to him up way up in the night, and finally we went to bed. And I had to tell him all kinds of stories, didn't I? Huh? You couldn't tell me one, could you? Huh? Hey man, we got up the next morning and we done made this up two or three days beforehand. We're gonna go to the mountain. He, I just said we'd go to the mountain. He said, Bay's Mountain? I said, well, Yeah. So we went to Bay's Mountain after we went to IHOP and eat breakfast. <laughs> and about 30 minutes after we was up there, he said, I'm hungry. <laughs> Did he? He said, I want a tea and I want, I want french fries and I want a hamburger. No, I don't want no hamburger. I want a milkshake and french fries. No, I want iced tea and french fries. <laughs> anyway, the day was filled up with pros and cons. You love Papa? You like to Papa? You like Mom and Daddy? <laughs> you better go back there and make up with him because I think, I think that hesitation got you in trouble. Amen. Amen. Caden's always standing all night with me, and uh, uh, when he didn't get to go with me and stay all night with me, he, he got upset. Of course, he had other things going on. But get back here. Where, where's our feet going to carry us today? Where's our feet going to carry us next week? What part of our feet will have to do with the gospel of the Lord Jesus next week or this week today? A lot of us will take our Bibles, and this is what we'll do. As soon as I close mine, you close yours, and they won't be open back up the rest of the week. That's true. Amen. Brother Tom asked me this morning, said, can I borrow a Bible this morning? I said, yes, sir. And he told me the reason he didn't have his. All the time we're collecting Bibles here, usually they're back there on the, on the table where people leave them, and some of them lay here for months and never used. I guarantee you, if you didn't bring your Bible here with you this morning, it's probably out in the car. Or somewhere where you lay and you don't know where it's at. How can our feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel if we don't open the lids of it? Let me say this and I'll close here in just a minute. We're living in a day and time that people are so illiterate. And when I say then the only time they read or study is something that they've got a task in front of them, they know they have to pass. You kids, you got, have you got a test coming up in school? You got some tests coming up? Okay. You got to study for it, don't you? To pass it. Hey, man, what happens if you don't study for it? You fail it, don't you? Who gets mad? Mom and daddy. When they say the book report. Let me say this. The Lord won't get mad at you, but he gets awful upset when we don't read the word of God. I'm talking about children. I'm talking about adults, grandpas and grandmas. We need to read on a daily basis. Preachers got to read yeah. on a daily basis. Every one of us. We need to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. So when the fire darts of the devil comes, mm -hmm. we know what to do with them. How many has had any temptations this week or last week? Well, I got news for you. You're going to have more of them this week. Those temptations that you yielded to this week, amen, needs to be tucked and got on the altar somewhere and say, Lord, forgive me. And it's just going to make it easier for you to go out there and do things uh, worse next week than you did this week. You know, I'm glad I'm a Christian. I'm glad that the Lord washed my sins away. But that don't exempt me from praying and asking God for forgiveness. I have to do that on a daily basis. And if I want God to answer my prayers, I've got to keep my life in order with Him. Amen. I, I preached a message one time. I'm particular who prays for me. You can get people out there and they can say some of the prettiest words and go on and on and on. I'm made to believe like old man Elijah and it didn't take him just a few words. God sit down in the fire. You see, God knows what we have need of. And if we don't follow him and trust him, we're going to have more problems, more troubles, more heartaches. I'm made to believe here this morning. Amen. That there's some hanging in the balance this morning. You've got some problems. You don't know what to do with it. I don't care how small or how great it is. You'll bring it to Jesus and just put it in his hand. I'm not talking about bringing it, laying it on the altar and then getting it up and carrying it back out the door with you. I'm talking about laying it on the altar and trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, while they come get a song, amen, singers come.
organs pain will come. There's some things today that, that you can do to get God to move in your life. Having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. We find all the good things that God does for us every day. But it's up to us to be in the place or in the position for God to pour those blessings up on. How many like to see or receive blessings? Amen. Everybody. Then we're going to have to come to God. Why they come here this morning? Right here this morning. Listen. No matter how small it is, or how great it is, my God's able. Come up here, Daniel. I brought Daniel up here this morning for a purpose. Up to a few weeks ago, he hadn't been to church in quite a while. He'd gotten into school, and he got hooked up with some crowds that probably didn't help matters with any. But I could tell in his mother, eyes, his granddaddy, his grandmother, and those that loved him, you could tell they was carrying a heavy burden. You know what got this young man back to church? It was their prayers, it was their tears, and their compassion. Are you sorry that you come back, son? No. I see him come get on. Go ahead. I, I, I'm not sorry, David. I've come back and I've been to church every chance I can get ever since I've been back. And I praise the Lord for what He did for me. So if it wasn't for Him, I wouldn't have been back. Man. Amen. And I can bounce for Him. He comes with the revival down there when Brother Cole was preaching out Mount Vernon. Amen. And seeing him in church here this morning, Your Grandma, Grandpa, and Dad, and Mom, and none of them's here. But he's here. What did the Lord do for you that brought you here? Amen. It saved my soul. It saved my soul. That's enough, amen, for every one of us. Amen. Now let me ask you a question. We're going to pray, okay? If the Lord was to come today, have you done all that you can do for your loved ones? Have you prayed enough? Have you wept enough? Have you talked it over with God? What bothers me, and I hold a lot of funerals, and I hear people, well, if I'd done this, or if I'd done that, and they start beating themselves up. It's too late. It's too late, amen, after water's over the dam, after the milk is filled. It's too late. Today's the day of salvation, now's the exception time. Does this mean that Daddy won't get back out in the world? No. But my prayer is, Lord, you help him to stay close and to worship you and not be ashamed of the gospel. Help him to witness to those that are lost. We're going to pray. And I want maybe one more verse of song while every head's bowed. Amen. As, as many as would and could, I'd like you to come here around this altar and bring those burdens, bring those troubles that only God can take care of. Right here, right now. Can you do that while they sing another verse? I'm made to believe that God can and will. I don't believe there's anything too hard for God. Man. The Lord speaks to your heart. Slip out. Come down here. They put in your room. Around this altar on this front pew. How bad this morning? There's some things that only God can take care of. Nobody else can do it. If you're here today and unsaved, if you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, don't expect God to come down and answer prior because He can't do it. He can't bless over sin. But if you want God to do in your heart and your life and your home, then you come home to God, confess your sins, and ask Him forgiveness. And I guarantee you He'll start working immediately. No matter how good a person you are, how good a person you've been, no matter what you've done good, no matter what you've done in life, 
it won't get you there. But simple faith, believing. One more verse. I want some more, some more, one more verse. How about it this morning? You got something you need to talk over the Lord? You got something, amen, that's really bothering you? Maybe you're not sleeping too good. Maybe you're, maybe you're going through some difficulties. Only God can move in your life. How about it today? Right now. We're going to pray. Will you come? Will you come? Hallelujah. Thank you, sister. <laughs> Amen. Won't you come? Somebody just lift their hand and say, Preacher, I'd like you to remember me in prayer. God bless you. Somebody else. God bless you, honey. Anyone else? God bless you and you and you and you. That's yes, starting to wake up. Amen. Anybody else? like to be remembered. God bless you, honey. We're certainly going to pray for you, but we'd rather pray with you. And the only way that God can work in our lives is for us to submit ourselves unto Him. This time we're going to pray, and I want to pray for all these that's raised their hands. I want to pray for these that's come and got on the altar, and some are still here on the altar. I appreciate this little mother that walked over here, this young man, and told him how much she appreciates. You talk about encouragement. That's what we need. We need encouragement. We need to pray one for another. So right now, as we go to the Lord in prayer, would you pray with me and ask God to reach down and help us to have our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel. Help us to carry out the gospel that we might see souls saved right now. Father, in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for what you've already done here. Lord, not so much, Lord, in the words that we spoke, but Lord, through the Holy Spirit, and the working, dear God, in these folks' lives. Lord, I pray, God, those that's come, Lord, that you'll reach down, dear God, and touch them and help them see, dear God, Lord, the victory that they so much need. These, Lord, that raise their hand up for prayer, I pray, God, that you would give them faith. Lord, that you'll help them, dear God, to become faithful witnesses. And Lord, that they might carry the gospel out. And Lord, they may ever turn things over to you. I pray, Lord, that there'll be a sinner here today that's unsaved. God, that you'd send Holy Ghost convictions. Sure, Father, I want to see people saved. Sure, Father, I want to see things happen for our people. But we know, dear God, that you can't bless over sin. And I pray, God, that you'd send, Lord, Holy Ghost revival meetings in our churches, in our lives. Help us, Lord, Father, to draw closer to you than we first believe. I thank you today and I praise you for everything that you've done this day. Thank you, Lord, again for every home that's represented. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you, son. I appreciate you, honey.